Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Are you ready for Bible class? Yes. Praise the Lord. We want to open up with a song that goes with my topic, Amazing Grace. If you know the words, we'll sing it together. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I, I see. Praise God. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. Thanking you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. And we just want to rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we pray that as we go through this lesson tonight, that we will learn from it, Lord. And that we will go out in the highways and byways and compel others to come to Christ. We thank you and we love you and we adore you. We pray for all of our sick, all of our shut-in, and all of our bereaved family. We pray for our pastor, Pastor Domingo Fitzgerald, and all of the City of David family. And we just thank you and we love you. And anything that we need, we know you got, got it because you own the cattle on the 10,000 hill. And we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, I give it pray. Praise the Lord. The Lord has led me to deal with at least three of the parables. But tonight I'm going to put emphasis more or less on the lost son. The lost son. Say the lost son with me. The lost son. The lost son. Praise God for whom all blessing. For I'm sure many of us have had a lost son. Uh, before we go into the chapter where the lost son is found, which is chapter 15, and it begins at the 11th verse, I'd like to give you something before that chapter. Jesus teaches about the cost of being a disciple. In this chapter, Jesus talks about seeking status and in the form of hard work and even suffering. Let us not lose sight on the hard work it takes to implement a plan, agreement, or decision. Jesus' audience was well aware of what it meant to carry your own cross when the Romans led a criminal to his execution. Cited he was forced to carry the cross on which he was to die. Following Christ means total submission to him. And so we want to keep that in mind that following Christ is total submission to him. Giving up whatever it is that we're doing that is not of God and give total submission to Christ. In chapter 15, uh, uh, it starts out with in verse 11, and if you want to stand for the reading of the word, and uh, he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, give me my portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him, them his living, his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey 
into a foreign country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In this particular chapter, it may seem foolish for the shepherd, the shepherd to lead it. Praise God. The parable of the prodigal son or lost son is found in New Testament of the Bible in Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. It is of three parables in that chapter directed at a mixed audience of tax collectors, sinners, Pharisees, leaders, and teachers of the law. All three parables are on the topic of lost things being found, a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. And so as we move on, likewise all the parables point to the heavenly joy over every sinner who repents from sin and turns to Jesus. So we want to get a clear understanding of a parable and, and why Jesus used the, these parables to expose the hypocrisy and hard, hardness of the Pharisees and religious leaders in contrast to those who recognize their need for a savior, repent, humble themselves before God. As we move on, we want to make sure that we get what is the main message of the parable of the two sons and what are three moral lessons that we can find in these parables. And so, as we move forward, the parable of the prodigal son or long son is found, as I say, in our New Testament. Likewise, all three parables point to the heavenly joy or over sinners who repent from sin and turn to Jesus. Jesus had his specific audience a mixture of sinners and righteous in mind when he told these three stories. Jesus was prompt to tell these parables because the Pharisees and teachers of the law were accusing him of welcoming sinners and eating with them. Clearly, the Pharisees and teachers of the law viewed themselves as righteous and the other half of the audience as sinners. Jesus told the stories of the lost sheep, lost corn, and son to clear up the matter of who is truly lost. And we want to recognize that some of us are truly lost. So who was the prodigal son and what was his story? The parable of the prodigal son, the parable begins by introducing three characters, a father and his two sons. To summarize the tale, the youngest of the two sons demanded his share of his father's estate, which the father gives him. He didn't want to wait till his father died. He wanted whatever he was going to give him at that time. So shortly after being given his inheritance, he runs off and squanders the wealth and in riotous living, finding himself destitute and in the midst of a severe fight, fat famine. And the place that he went, which was a far country, he went over there having a good time, partying, shaking a tail feather, doing his thing with the women, and then Guess what? When he ran out of money, did you think them women want him anymore? They, they didn't have no need for him, did they? So uh, they were through with it. So that happens in this day and time. You can meet someone, and then all of a sudden they don't want you anymore because 
they feel like that you don't fit what they want because you don't have what they think you should have. And this is the way it was with the prodigal son. Um, finding himself destituted in the midst of a severe famine. So in that far country, a famine had taken place. And we know what a famine is. And, and when the famine took place, there was no food available, there was nothing that they could eat or whatever it was that they needed to survive. But the prodigal son ended up um, in a hog pen because the women didn't want it no more. He's broke, he didn't have no money. He spent up all the money that the daddy had gave him for his inheritance. And so he uh, ended up there with the hogs. But it was said, one writer said that he didn't actually eat the food of the hog. But he was there with the hogs. Okay? Now, he says this. So he got up and went to his uh, uh, father. Well, he had sense enough to know, here I'm down here with these hogs. I'm going to get up from here. And, and uh, because I know that my father is rich in houses and land. So I'm going to get up from here and do something about myself. Right. That's just like we see all these homeless people on the street, and some of them have sense enough to get up and do something with their life. Look at, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the one guy that got up, and now he's a writer, and he's making all these different black movies, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. He, he didn't stay there. He could have stayed down there. But he said, no, I'm not going to stay down here. I'm going to get up and rise. So you don't have to stay in a hog pit. You can get up and move forward with your life and do, and do better. Amen. So uh, Luke 15, 20 to 24 says this. So he got up and went to his father. But here's the thing. But meanwhile, though the other son had been faithful to working with uh, the father and whatever they had, uh, the, the second son was out in the field working and doing what he needed to do uh, to be with the family. But what happened was, it was like his youngest son had been dead and was alive again. He had been lost and now was found. The story concludes with the father bleeding with the oldest son. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and he's now found. Now I remember a situation even in my own family life that I had a son and to me he was a prodigal son. For about seven years I didn't know where that son was. A girlfriend of mine and myself, we went on the computer to do a search. We didn't know if he was dead or alive. So we went on the computer to do a search to see if we could find a trace. It told us a lot of different places that he had lived or used as an address, but he was no longer at those places. And I remember one day, I opened my door and guess who was standing at my door? The prodigal son. I was so happy to see him. I didn't even blast him out or say, where you been all this time? Or why would you do this to your mother? Or why would you just stay away and nobody knew where you were? 
I just welcomed him home just like the father did here and celebrated that my son was alive. That was the important thing, knowing that he was alive. Sometimes we think we know better and we surrender the grace of God and trade it in for worthless treasures. And yet, at the point that we realize that we are unworthy, living like pigs, sinners, rebels, indeed, destitute, hunger, dirty, and empty, so much so that it compels us to run back in the arms of grace. We will be saved, for it is by grace that we are saved, and all sinners and tax collectors and prodigal sons say amen, amen. amen. There is a rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents, over one sinner who comes back home. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We know that God is good all the time. And after all the time, he is good. And also we want to keep in mind that Jesus told these parables for a reason. Jesus teaches about the cost of being a disciple. In this chapter, Jesus talks about seeking status in our favor of hard work and even suffering. Let us not lose sight on the hard work it takes to implement a plan, agreement, or decision. Jesus' audience was well aware of what it meant to carry your own cross. And when the Romans led a criminal to his execution, he was forced to carry the cross on which he was to die. Following Christ means total submission. Total submission. Total submission. Praise God. And let's look at what some writers have said about what a parable. They said a parable is a short and simple story that teaches a religious or moral lesson. Why did Jesus say in parables? Through speaking in parables, Jesus grants understanding to those who are seeking after him, revealing truth to those who are willing to listen and thoughtfully consider what he had to say. Those whose hearts are hardened against him have the truth hidden from them. Uh, we, uh, one writer said uh, it is a short, fictitious story. An illustration. In other words, in this definition, the point of parables is to take something that is unclear or less than clear or maybe not persuasive, like a moral attitude or religious idea, and to make them more understanding and more persuasive. So that's what Jesus was doing with a uh, parable. Praise God. The Gospel of Luke certainly contains both the longest total number of parables. And uh, in uh, the Gospel of Luke, there is at least 18 unique parables. The Gospel of Matthew contains 23 parables, which 11 are unique, and the Gospel of Mark contains eight parables of which two are unique. There is no parables in the Gospel of John. John has no parables. Jesus' teaching, teaching focuses much more on his own identity and his unique relationship with the Father. And so we want to remember as thanks to God that these parables are a lesson for us and the things that we deal with in our everyday life. And some of us have lost something sometime in our lifetime. But God knows how to uh, allow us to recover that something 
that we have lost. Praise God. So, as we move forward, we just want to remember the story of the lost son. And so, there are one of the other parables that we are dealing with is the one of the lost sheep. And that was the one where one of the sheep left the fold. And uh, David decided to go after the one that had left. So the question is, would you leave the 99 and go after the, the one? So it's important that we go after that one sheep that leaves even this fold at a city of David. Uh, if we don't see some of the sheep for a long period of time, we ought to be concerned about that sheep. And, and some way or another, find a way to contact them, see why they have not been here at the church. So we have to go after those who, whom we have not seen or those who has left the fold. For we don't know what their reason is or what their reason for not being on, on scene, but we know that they have not been present. And so it is our job as saints of God to go after the one that has left the fold. Amen. So when we're dealing with the lost sheep, we know that God will be pleased with our behavior when we do what he has assigned us to do as saints of God. Yes. Um, we just want to continue to do the work that God has assigned us as saints of God. And remember uh, our responsibility. And so in order to know what to do, we got to be stewards of his word. Yes. We got to study what to show ourselves approved mm -hmm. that a workman need not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And the only way we're going to rightly divide the word of truth is to get into the word and, and pray right. and ask God what? To give us wisdom and knowledge yes. of his word and understanding of his word yes. in order for us to depart his word to someone else someone else. It's a blessing to be able to be stewards of his word. It's a blessing. And um, as I move on, there's some uh, statements that uh, we need to ha have an answer to. And, and that is what is the main message of the prodigal, of the parable of the two son. Jesus used this parable to expose hypocrisy and hard-heartedness of the Pharisees and religious leaders in contrast to those who recognize their need for a savior, repent, and humble themselves before God. What are three moral lessons from the parable of the prodigal son? Three moral lessons. One is repentance. Another is forgiveness. And redemption are all important as aspects of our lives. What is the lesson from, for the, product, the brother of the prodigal son? And the old, older brother was so caught up in working to earn his keep, working to earn his father's love, and all of uh, his uh, toils, he forgot that love is not something to be earned, but given. Furthermore, the love of of uh, a father, at least, or a heavenly one, is unconditional. So we know that God has unconditional love. He has no respective of persons. And uh, we just don't want to think that uh, he, he doesn't love us anymore. But he does. He loves us no matter what. Uh, we fall short of his glory. But we know that even falling short of his glory, he doesn't give up on us. And so that basically deals with the story of the law 
star sun, the particle sun. Um, so we have some people that are waiting right now for their family member to die so that they can get whatever they got, their house, their car, their money. But you don't have to worry about that. Just remember that whatever is for you, God has, is going to give it to you. And I remember when after my son came into my house, he sat down and talked to me and told me about his reason for why he stayed away so long. And uh, everything that he said to me was positive. And I was thankful to know that he thought enough of his mother to say the things that he said to me. He said, one thing I do know, that you did what you're supposed to do, to raise us and take care of us. It was not your fault because we got off track, he said. And so I, I, I thought about those things, and I said, let me get up from where I am and go and see my mother, my mother. And I wrapped my arms around him and showed him my love. And, uh, you know, the scripture says, forgetting those things that are behind you and press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. So I forgot about all, <clears throat> all of what had went on in the past and why he had been gone for at least seven years and I didn't know whether he was dead or alive. Uh, another story that uh, I can remember is a girlfriend of mine had a set of twins. She got a call and, and they told her that one of them asked her, did she know this name that uh, they presented to her? And she said, yes, this is my son. They found him dead downtown on Skin, skin Road. So they asked her, what did she want them to do with the body? She said, well, it's not that I can do. I don't have any insurance on him or anything. Y'all do what y'all want to with the body. And so that's what happened. Myself, I would have tried to, if I didn't have any money, I'd try to raise some money to give him a decent burrow. But you'd be surprised how things like that happen. And uh, people uh, don't have the money. And so they just don't want to be bothered. Or they don't want to deal with the situation at hand. So uh, I'm just grateful that I didn't have to worry about this son because God sent him back to where he needed to be. And he's been a blessing. And so he calls me and talks to me all the time and tells me, he said, Mama, I love you. So that when you hear that from your child, you know you've done your job. He said, I love you. We didn't, live, we didn't live without anything. Even though our father didn't do what he should have done, you made sure that we had food on the table. He said, I'll never forget those three-piece suits. Remember back in the day, the kids used to wear, they don't do that no more because now. Well, the, the different uh, styles of clothing has changed. So he said, and every Sunday you kept us in church. And uh, he said, I was on my job and I was quoting the books of the Bible. And they said, oh, you know all those books. He said, I couldn't help from knowing it because my mama kept us in church. <laughs> we were in church from morning Tonight, we even went to night service. We was in the Sunshine Band, he said, he told me. Oh, when it was Vacation Bible School, we was in Vacation Bible School. So um, it pays to raise your kids in the right 
matter. That's why the scripture said, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he grows old, he will not depart from it. So I, I'm thankful that I was able to do my job with my prodigal son and that God brought him back home. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You may be watching this uh, Bible class online, and it's invitation time. Yeah. Salvation, if you want salvation, if you want to be a part of the ministry of City of David, you can join City of David and type it all in, and we will get the information, and then we will notify you. Now, at this time, if we have any names to, to pray for, if anyone have a particular person they want us to pray for, it's time for prayer. So I'm, I'm praying for my sister in Indiana who's recovering from a condition and uh, also a couple of friends of mine who needs, stands in the need of prayer, uh, praying for the city of David and everything that is striving to do and, and the work that God has given our pastor to lead us to another height. I think I'm praying also for every ministry here at city of David. So, dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for all the ministries here. And as we go forth to do our job and to do what you require of us to do, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for our leader, our pastor, and thank you for your only begotten son. For you said that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The songwriter said, if I have wounded any souls today, if I have caused one foot to go astray, if I have walked in my own willful way, I ask the Lord to forgive. He said, if I have uttered idle words or vain, if I have turned aside from one our pain, least I offend some other through the strain. Dear Lord, forgive. If I have been perverse or hard or cold, if I have longed for shelter in the fold, when thou hast given me some fort to hold, dear Lord, forgive. Forgive the sins I have confessed to thee. Forgive the secret sins I do not see. O oh, guide me, love me, and my keeper be. Lord, forgive. Praise the Lord. And I pray that you got an understanding of this story of the lost son. Uh, I will do a second part of this when I bring the lesson on the 25th of the lost sheep. Praise the Lord.